呃，我身边的这一位呢，就是我们今天的嘉宾陈嘉玲 c a r l i n e Chen。Hi, c a r l i n e Hey, you done? This is our tradition, right? When you first heard that this hotel is applying nine individual liquor licenses, what's your reaction? Well, of course, anytime <laughs> anybody applies for a liquor license down here, it always raises、uh, red flags with me because even though they may contain contain their crowds inside, you know, people still come out to the street to. Uh, smoke,、mm-hmm. or to, sometimes to just to get some fresh air.、Mm-hmm. So you know, when you have a couple of drinks, you, your conversation gets animated. It gets a little bit loud.、Mm-hmm. Right? So you know, I mean, they'll disturb people, especially with the Buddhist temple across the street. Oh,、right? speaking of the temple, let's take a look at the temple. What is 200 foot rule? The state law states that if there's a a school、mm-hmm. or a religious institution within 200 feet. Of a liquor license application that nullifies the application,、mm-hmm. you are now allowed to open or serve alcohol within 200 feet. How, how far is it? Do you think this is roughly maybe 125 feet? At least the concern for me is the live band and DJ from the lobby. Because、mm-hmm. you know, even though they may soundproof the inside of the lobby,、mm-hmm. when people open the door, the sound still escapes.、Mm-hmm. Right. And also with this venue here, yeah, this is also their building. So they on the second floor. This is going to be part of the hotel. That's part of the hotel because、oh. this, one of the applications calls for a liquor license here on the second floor. Okay. And they're going to have a separate entrance, and they're saying they were saying they, they're going to have security and、mm-hmm. ropes. I said, you know, for a 186 seat venue, why would you need security? Do you think the, this temple is actually actually going to stop them from applying? You know, actually,、licenses? that's a good question because I don't think they knew. That there was a, a temple here, they they see they only read the facade over here. <laughs> they don't know there's like a Buddha, but they don't read Chinese Buddha right here. I I don't know if they should have a PR team、mm-hmm. that did research into the neighborhood. Yeah, you know, normally a 200 foot rule is on the same side of the street.、Mm-hmm. So being that this is across the street, maybe they see a way of getting around it. And there is a, there is also is there a way of getting around it? Sometimes when you when there's when you're within 200 feet, let's say you're barely within the 200 foot, you would apply. You know, you would go to the and argue in front of the SLA full board, that you know, to argue for variance on、mm-hmm. it. Okay, whether the full board grants it, it's up to them. It's very cold today, so let's go find a place to sit down and talk indoor. He said it's good. You don't have to. You don't,、okay. you don't need to. Alright, I want to leave、yeah. it like this then. That's、yeah, good. I'll just hold it like this. <laughs> <laughs> You used the 200 foot rule before on the other hotels, right? Yes.、Uh, what, well, what, what was going on? Well, the the thing is, I, I wasn't successful because I applied the rule to a storefront or a,、uh, a storefront Buddhist temple, you know, temple or a church, right? So that's when apparently when you know, I found out that the whole building needs to be dedicated to to that house of worship. So they own the building and they don't have tenants,、right? and the whole structure is being used. That's where the 200 foot rule comes in. If they knew there's a temple right across the street, why would they still put in a large amount of money into renovating this hotel? Apparently, a lot of this has to do with、uh, ego and arrogance towards the community.、Mm-hmm. Uh, they apparently don't care about the community. They, they figured. Uh, maybe they can get over by trying to fight it at the SLA uptown、mm-hmm. and get a liquor license anyway. If I were a resident of、uh, that block, I would prepare for the worst.、Uh, yes, I would. I would say so. I, I mean, a lot of the residents around the area,、uh, a good percentage of which is Chinese, ethnic Chinese, who, who、uh, doesn't really understand English that well, they're not even aware of this,、uh, these nine different applications going into for one building.、Mm-hmm. I actually interviewed some of the residents in that neighborhood in that block. None of them actually knew about this. What's going on with that hotel? Anytime、uh, a business owner, a hotel, be it, whether it be a hotel or a restaurant, they apply for a liquor license, they are required to put a public notice on their door, on the door of the storefront.、Uh, Have you ever seen a Chinese notice? I, I have, I'm not familiar that there was any notice there, but、um, I will ask the. Because the I actually talked to the Archer Street Block Association, they told me that the hotel developer actually didn't do any canvas、uh, in the community. They didn't reach out to the community. Is that legal? 
Is no, that a they're, they're, requ they're required to do community outreach. They're required, they're required by the community board now. Oh, they did notice the community, but they didn't use the local language. They didn't use Mandarin or Cantonese or anything like that. They only used English. But majority, like 70% of the residents are Chinese. No, Chinese, right. And immigrant Chinese. Immigrant Chinese. Okay, so Is that well, a problem? All notices should be and outreach should be done in the language of the uh, the demographic makeup of the neighborhood, the immediate area, being that that's seventy percent Chinese. That the notices should have gone up in Chinese and Spanish, mm -hmm. along with the English. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that's a fairly good arguing point up at the SLA pool board. Already. But why did the community board, especially the SLA committee, pass uh, the approved application of those nine individual licenses? There are five members on there now. Nobody wants to serve on that committee. And, and <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Why, why happened well, to that committee? They, they meet twice a month, and they're sitting there at one, 1 o'clock in the morning sometimes. Uh, so and, and there are a lot of people, you know, they spend an hour, hour and a half, sometimes two hours on per application. And every night, they, they, lo they load up their agenda with maybe 12 to 15 items on there. So they, they're kind of overwhelmed, but then again, uh, you know, of the three members on, the, on that five committee panel, Three of them own business. They they own uh, a restaurant with a liquor license. So we, we, I'm seeing it as they are sort of liquor license friendly. They are because they want they want the trickle down business. Let's say the one the one hot venue is busy, then people don't want to wait. So they they figure oh they're gonna walk oh, around the neighborhood okay. and maybe they'll come into my place. So the, so I you know I've always said that if you own a, an establishment that sells liquor. You should not be on the SLA committee because it brings it raises up the possibility of a conflict of interest here. Speaking of the uh, committee, community work committee, there's actually going to be a term limit on each members. Yeah, that's great because I, I think three of them will be term term limited out. I don't know when their current term expires, but if it expires next. Uh, next spring, mm -hmm. uh, like mine does, they, they'll be gone. Uh, You're gonna be gone with them. No, no, I, I have one more term. I'm, <laughs> okay. a, I'm eligible for one more term. Okay, you have one I, more term. If I decide to serve it. Is it a good thing or a bad thing to set a limit on the term? I think it's a good thing because it, it, it gives turnover and it also puts more pressure on the borough president to do better training. But the thing is, if there's new blood in the committee, is the scenario gonna change? It's going to keep the same. Every year, 25 members come up for reappointment, mm -hmm. or if they resign, then we have open vacancies. Our borough president, she picks half of those uh, vacancies, and then the two elected in our district, uh, being uh, Carlina Rivera and Margaret Chin, they pick the remaining, I think it's the uh, 12 apiece. Uh, it's up to the elected to pick up a balance, a balance between residents and business. Right? But there's no balance in the SLA committee. I don't think so. I don't see a balance on there. I, I think they're more, you know, they Because the majority of them are small business owners, bar owners, liquor store owners. Yeah, and they also take an attitude that if we don't, that if we don't approve it and they get approved uptown by the SLA anyway, that they're going to run uh, uh, uninhibited till 4 o'clock in the morning. Then what's the point of setting a community, community board, setting a SLA committee if they're not going to say anything bad about it? The SLA is not going to know anything bad about this application. I don't see why we're not doing that. There's no way to turn it back. It's already it's already past the community board level, so right now it's going up down to the SLA. So what they what they have to do is keep an eye on the SLA agenda, who meets twice a month up on 126th Street. Mm -hmm. right. And you know, when, once it comes up uh, uh, on the schedule on the agenda, the residents need to go up there and speak up in front of the full panel. Mm -hmm. It's, right. it's a long wait. I mean, you know, I've been up there at 7 30 in the morning and I, I, you know, I don't get to testify till 3 30 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. But they're fighting for their life of quality. They're, fight, they're fighting, they're, you're fighting for the sanctity of your neighborhood and everything. So, you know, it's worth the fight. You need to take the, if you need to take the day off, take the day off. Right? They need to go up there. Right? Even, even for the non, non English speakers, they should go up there and support uh, uh, you know, a show of faces or something. Speaking of nightlife, actually, I heard people saying that the Lower East Side and Chinatown area it's a rocket speed developing pace. We've been lucky so far in keeping a lot of them out. Uh -huh. But you know, it takes a lot of effort. Every time I, 
I go out there and I'll pose on like a license. I have to stand on the sidewalk, whether it be snowing or whatever, to get signatures on my petition to oppose it. And not everybody sees it the same way. Some people see it and say, it's going to bring in more people to the area. But it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's traffic. It's under, to me, it's uh, undesirable traffic. Do you think it's going to happen? Because this is like the last piece land in Manhattan. Well, it, you know, with the developments going up at the One, in Manh one Manhattan Plaza and then the mm -hmm. three proposed luxury towers, mm -hmm. right, nightlife and restaurants are going to start pushing towards the river that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, it, it's it's a it's a migration. There is no more room. The rents are so high up in Hell Square that they're beginning to come spread us out. We have nine orchards. But some of the residents are accusing community board for being too friendly to the newcomers. I can under I can understand those residents' the concerns. Sometimes I feel the same damn way. Uh, but you know. It, you, know, you feel we, the same because you're the resident too. <laughs> well, well I, I mean, it's down there, but I oppose liquor licenses down in the Low East Side. I'm, uh -huh. I'm a half a mile away, but you know, mm -hmm. you know if, if they have a legitimate concern, we work together. There are always those people who would support that, who, 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 who I don't know, they, you know, they, they hope to get use it as a venue in the future or something at a discounted rate. But you know, but there are people who in our community that support this. So do you think there's an ultimate solution? I have no problem against a restaurant opening and I see a legitimate need for a full legal license. I'm not against any good restaurants or community-friendly restaurants. Yeah. But in our experience down here, we've had a couple of operators like Le Baron and they, they were supposed to be a restaurant. I don't think they, I don't think they served a piece of bread ever, uh, ever since they opened. And that turned out to be a nothing but a disco. And it was advertised on Yelp, it was advertised all over on social media. And, you know, in the basement, which is no bigger than this place, they had a 200 people trying to dance. And, you know, that, that was a nightmare for our neighborhood. So that's what we're looking for. So based on your opinion, you want something that's good. Not only good for the tourists, for the newcomers, but also good co for the community. Yes. They're going to give back to the community. Yes. I, I have no problem with a restaurant opening, a legitimate restaurant opening. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's why we have to look at the, the menu. Mm -hmm the people opening a place because they have a history. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you can find a history of their other previous establishments and you, know, you can try to gauge and make an educated guess about what kind of establishment this is going to be. Okay, So, uh, I mean, a restaurant nowadays with the kind of rent that New York City, Lower Manhattan, Lower East Side is charging without a liquor license, you know, a lot of people like to have a drink, mm -hmm. uh, a cocktail or maybe wine or something with their dinner or maybe a cocktail before dinner. So I see that as legitimate, and if it's a legitimate restaurant, I have no problem with it. All right. Thank you, Carla. Oh, thank you. Okay, we're good.